The OOPS Guardian 6000 is a massive new power station from OOPS. It's possibly the most powerful power station that they have made so far. It seems to have a little bit of everything. And while being a jack of all trades is nice and all, what we really need to know is for a budget power station, is this thing worth spending your hard earned money on? So welcome back to the lab where our opinions cannot be bought. The Guardian 6000 is clearly an evolution from OOPS. It's actually nice to see a more modern looking power station from them. Their expansion batteries are EcoFlow like now. Everything's a little bit cleaner, a little bit sleeker. And I believe this is the first 240 volt OOPS unit that we have had here at the lab. As always, we will leave links to this unit in the description down below, as well as any coupon codes we can get from OOPS to help you guys save as much money as possible. We will also leave links to the power station quiz if you guys don't know exactly what power station you need. You can take the quiz, it takes 30 seconds, it gives you an instant recommendation. Before we jump into our experience using the Guardian 6000, everything we like and the things that we really don't, we're gonna hit you with a super quick spec teardown in case you're not already familiar with this behemoth of a power station. First up, this thing barely passes the tiny baby lift test. It weighs 111 pounds, which is a lot, but it's also just huge. It has a 4,608 watt hour battery capacity, which is expandable with eight of their G5 batteries, gets you up to 41 kilowatt hours. 41.4. Nailed it. This thing has a 6,000 watt inverter on the 240 volt side. It only does 3,600 watts if you're just talking 120 volts, which isn't bad, that's more than half. And it does mean that this 30 amp on the side right here is a true 30 amp plug, which is really nice. In terms of powering this thing up, you can charge it from a regular house plug inside of your home. In our testing at 1800 watts, it charged in about three hours and 12 minutes. You can also charge this thing up with solar. It has an 1800 watt solar input. And something really nice is you can actually charge this with 240 volts at 3,600 watts, which means you can get it from zero to full in about an hour and a half. When it comes to plugs and ports on this guy, you have 420 volt house plugs on the side. You have your 50 amp, which does your 240 volts. You also have a twist lock like L14 generator plug. And you have a 30 amp coming back to the 120 volt side of things. You have two expansion battery ports. You have your AC input and your solar and your car charging ports. And then on the front right here, underneath the screen, you have two USB A's, one USB C. This unit still retains a 12 volt car socket, and you have an XT60 like DC out port, which is very weird because their solar input is not XT60 which would be just great if it was. And overall, the design of this thing, like we said, it looks a little bit more sleek, a little bit more modern. It also kind of just looks like a pig. It's real girthy as you get down the sides of it. It's got the nice suitcase handle, not the strongest suitcase handle we've ever seen, but it's there. Of course, you have your nice wheels so you can wheel this thing around. They are a more hard plastic, but what is nice is that it sits up on all four feet when it's sitting here. It's very secure. It's got two big handles right here. Health and safety can fit his big meaty hands in there. And the screen's pretty nice. It's bright, it's big, it's easy to read. Shows you everything you need to know and nothing more. And this unit works with Oops app. They actually have a new app. It lets you not only turn things on and off from a distance, but it lets you schedule tasks so you can actually use this thing to like peak shape. And right now, with our discount code, you can get this gargantuous pick for $1,614, which when you compare it to the market, it's actually a pretty good deal. So the first thing that we really liked about the Guardian 6000 was the overall design of it. They cleaned it up. It's a better feeling unit when you're using it. If you start by just looking at the plugs, they're properly spaced apart. You can plug multiple things in at once without having things overlap. You have a little bit of everything. Like you have your 420 volt plugs, which isn't a ton but it's enough. And then you have three different options for 240 volts and a true 30 amp, which is just cool. It means there's really no situation you could find yourself in where this unit won't work with a plug that it already has on it. Speaking of that, the 240 volts out of this, there's three plug options. But what's nice is that most like budget power stations for Pecron, for example, don't have 240 volt units. You have to get two 120 volt units and pair it together. Most of the time, the budget brands are a little bit behind the name brands, and it used to be that you would get two units, pair them together to get 240. 
and this is a one of the first budget brands that we have seen that has actually done 240 directly out of the unit and it works well functions properly and everything does what it's supposed to which is cool we also mentioned it really quickly but i really like that it retains the 12 volt car socket it's just really nice if you have like camping accessories if you take this in an rv or whatever you're trying to do with it you could run like a 12 volt fridge directly off of the unit for some reason a lot of power station companies when you get into a bigger unit they stop giving you 12 volts and like we already said earlier the design with the wheels and the suitcase handle is great but what we really like about the whole thing is that it just has these really chunky, big rubber feet underneath. This is solid. Like once you have this down, it's heavy. It's 111 pounds on nice, big, chunky feet. So even if you had this in an RV or a trailer or something, you don't have to worry about it like sliding around and being weird. It's nice. It's up off the ground. We like it. And this thing also did pretty good in our testing. The efficiency was like 85%, which from a budget brand, that's huge. The UPS feature works really well up to your 1800 watt charge limit. And honestly, it wasn't quiet. Like the fans right here are the size of ceiling fans, but it wasn't as loud as you would expect for a cheaper unit with ginormous fans. And the last thing that we really liked about Oops is that they actually are starting to get pretty good with customer support which is like a massive important thing in the space. If you call them, they only have like one guy that answers all of the calls and stuff. So if you call in, odds are you'll get a voicemail, but they do get back to you relatively quickly. What was the longest we waited for a callback? Four hours. That's pretty good. Like four hours to waiting for a callback is that you're getting called back from an American that you can have a legible conversation with. They can understand your problem and help you with it. We trialed it a couple times and it actually went really well. So that's huge for Oops, like good job for doing that because a lot of companies just don't. Now there is a few things that we don't love about this power station. And the first one is that the solar input is an Anderson cable, which just means that most generic folding solar panels won't plug directly into this. You'll need adapters or Oops specific panels, but that's weird because right on the front right here, you have an XT60, which is a very standard plug. Like XT60 is the standard solar input. So the fact that they put one on as an output, but they're making you get adapters for your solar panels is just a little weird. We don't love seeing that. Something else that's very small, but like impractical, I guess, is that the power buttons all over this unit, like if you zoom in on this AC button right here, it blends in to the power station way too much. Like for us, yeah, we look at it and see it, but even the, the customer service rep that you were talking to yes. said that people, older people, no offense to the older people, they're calling in and being like, how do I turn this thing on? Like, where's the buttons? They just blend in really easy is the point. The AC button is over here with all the plugs. The rest of them are all across the front, but they're so easy to miss, especially if you have any trouble seeing. So that's a weird little thing. It's the first time I think we've heard said something like that, but it was funny that we noticed it and the customer service guy said people have literally called to ask. We also, this one should come as no surprise, don't like that there's no light on this unit. This is not even a one-man lift. This is a two-man lift. So if you have this in your basement or in your garage and the power goes out and you need to move it, two of you will be carrying it with two hands and you won't be able to see. Putting a light on a power station like this is huge for a power outage situation like that where you're just trying to get up the stairs without killing yourself. Being able to see from one end of this would be nice. A few other little things to note is the idle consumption is a bit high on this. It's about 75 watts just sitting here on, which is high. It makes sense because there's a ton of 240 volt plugs. So having these all just have ready to go power at them at all times, it, it is going to take a little bit more power from the unit to do that. But 75 watts is still eating up a decent amount of your battery just idling. You also cannot charge this unit with a 120 volt house plug while you're running any of the 240 volt plugs. It only lets you put in 120 and output 120 at the same time. So that's just something to know. Some of the newer EcoFlow products, for example, you could put in 120 and still pull 240. This one does not allow you to do that. And the last thing from our testing, at least that we found that was just a little weird was that this unit, when you're charging it, the screen will say 100% and it will, it will not say it's taking any power from the wall. But if you use a power meter, it shows that it's still pulling about a thousand watts for over half an hour once it says it's done charging. So if you just unplug it right when it says it's at hundred percent, you're missing out on a pretty significant amount of power in your batteries just because there's battery balancing that's going on or whatever. Point is it used a thousand watts out of the wall for over half an hour once this said it was completely full. So that's just something to know. 
I would overcharge this, just meaning leave it plugged in for a little bit longer than you might think. So who is this power station for? In our opinion, this is a great entry level unit for someone that wants home backup. If you could tie this into a transfer switch in your home, you can run 240 volts directly into your panel and it's massively scalable. So you can start for relatively cheap, 1600 bucks for one unit. You can tie that into your home. You can back up some things in case of an emergency or a power outage. And if you wanna grow with it, you can get it up to like 40 kilowatt hours, which is huge. That to us makes this pretty comparable with the Delta Pro 3. So if you're just trying to get the best bang for your buck, there's absolutely nothing wrong with going this direction. If you still don't know which unit is best for you, like I said earlier, go ahead and take a quiz. It's like 30 seconds. It gives you an instant recommendation. But if you're thinking about this unit at all, we would genuinely recommend it here at the lab. We think it's a great product. But let us know what you guys think. That is all we got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will catch you in the next one. Peace out and stay charged.